Good morning. Happy Wednesday. <clears throat> How is everyone today? Made it all the way around. Somehow time goes even faster, I think, in the summertime. I feel like we just did this. <clears throat> Hi, Mary Eileen. Hi, Carolyn. Let me see. Hi, Christine. Hi, Judy. <clears throat> How is everyone? Hi, Susie. Ellen, good morning. Hi, Carolyn. Gabby, how are you? <clears throat> Rosemary, oh, how fun. Hooray, I'm excited to paint this morning. Hi, Karen. I got up and did some computer work this morning. <clears throat> Hi, Sang <coughs> Sangeeta, how are you? Thanks for sharing the painting that, that you bought. It. I hope you love it, hope you love it. Great to see you, Mary Eileen. Very fun. So today we're going to paint here. Let me turn around and dive right in. Um, hi, Ellen. We're going to paint cherries, a little carton of cherries. Thought that would be fun. Now I feel like we have reflection. I think I would figure this out sometime to do this ahead of time. Is that, that's probably a little bit better. Can you guys see okay? <clears throat> I feel like it's a little dark. Let me put this little extra light on. You can see that reflection. I'll just move it up there. If I shoot the lights at the ceiling, sometimes that helps a little bit. So how is everyone? I need a sip of my coffee. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Oh, gosh. I had a lot of, like, deliveries yesterday. It was a good day. Like, when I find out that paintings have landed and are loved, it, it's... Uh, it makes me happy. Hi, Martha. I'm drinking my fat cow coffee this morning. <clears throat> okay. So, um, someone had asked me, I can't remember who, uh, maybe to even do something like this in the Inspiring Art Group, but how to paint like highlights on red items that don't go pink. So, I'm going to try to do that today. <clears throat> Oops, I have the wrong big brush out. Let me get a different one here. I washed my brushes this week. Okay, so this one's a little bit out of my color comfort zone, but that's good. It's always good to challenge yourself, no matter what. Um, <clears throat> always, always good. Can you guys see okay? I feel like it has a weird reflection. Um, can you see? Let me know if you can see this all right, or if I should try to... Um, great challenge. Yes, you know, I'm always willing to challenge myself because I know you'll forgive me if I, if I am not successful, but that's the way you learn is by taking risks. And, um, yeah, it's not, not always an easy thing to do, but it's always, uh, it always turns out well, almost, almost always. So why is it that we avoid it so much? I have no idea. <laughs> I do it too. I, um, I'm going to do a, a blog. I did a, wrote a blog post yesterday that I'm going to post when I send out the newsletter with this painting in it. Um, it's kind of about that. Live. Yes. <clears throat> Has cherry, oh, I don't know, Martha, if cherry picking has started at Cherry Hill. I never get around to cherry picking because yes, Martha, pick me some. Mar Martha said, Mike told, Mike said, pick, pick him some if you go. <laughs> I have no idea. I would love to go to that. I can't say that I've ever gone there and picked cherries, although it sounds like a lot of fun. Tell me when you go. Are you using rose or alizarin? Oh, Ellen, I was using, actually, let me see, because this isn't something I always have on my palette. I was using, um, as I put it out, because I need more red, reds. You know what, I wonder if my camera's dirty. I was using this um, Rembrandt transparent red medium. I'm going to, excuse me here, but I'm gonna wipe my camera. I feel like something's hazy looking. Do you feel like it's hazy? Where is my camera right here? Sorry about that. Is that better? I think it is better. Maybe my camera's just dirty. Yeah, I, 
think that looks better. Or maybe it's my eyes, gosh. <clears throat> Hi, Allie. Hi, Anita. Hi, Gail. Yes to Cherry Hill. Oh, fun. I would love to go do that. It's like one of those things that I don't get up from my, my desk to do. I'll go buy cherries at um, the local fruit stand, but I don't go pick my own, but I would love to do that. Think of the photos. I'd be so distracted with taking photos that I don't know how many cherries I'd actually pick, but that's okay. That would be the whole point, right? I'm figuring out where my carton goes here so that I don't like lose sight of that. So when I had this ready to paint this morning, it was the complete other way. I had my shadow going up. I had this painting flopped, but I kind of like it this way. So I just went in and flipped it around to take a look at it, and I like it. And I have that cool new teal color, which will be good for these um, for the carton, I think. This isn't quite the right color, but that's all right. You know, I, I've been really trying, which, you know, I'm always trying to push things a little bit, but I've been really trying to um, kind of take more risks in my paintings, like with the little ones that I've been doing. I think because they're little and they're so nothing to lose, which I always say, um, I love like kind of putting in colors that maybe don't belong and just letting it kind of evolve on its own. Love cherries, me too. Better. Good. Yes. Bit of a haze. That is much better. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, it seemed wrong. I thought it was my eyes. I put my contacts in this morning because um, I don't always do that anymore, but I feel like I don't see as well with my contacts as I do with my glasses. That's why I've been wearing my glasses a lot more. Really should just go to the eye doctor and get new, new, uh, put a little brown in there, I think. I should just go get new, um, contacts, but that would mean I'd have to go take care of that. Sometimes I have trouble, like, getting out of my universe of doing what I do to take, get other things done. <clears throat> um, I don't know if I like that brown. Let's choose a day ago. I would love that, Martha. Let's do that. That would be very fun. I still love the stories of you going pick and what did you go pick? Um, <clears throat> peaches with Renee. Excuse me. Feels so quiet. You guys talk a little bit here. I feel like it's quiet in here. So how's everyone doing? What's new? What's fun? What's going on? Are you working on anything fun? Creating anything new? <clears throat> what am I doing that's new and fun? Well, I got a big thing accomplished yesterday that I had hanging over my head because I have some artwork. Oh, thank you, Melissa. What colors are... Oh, Ellen, that's a good question. I am still using that um, transparent red medium, and I'm using magenta, and I have a little bit of brown mixed in there. Laura, you're in a slump. Uh-oh. Are you doing Rittenhouse in the fall, Laura? I wanted to ask you that, and I keep forgetting. In a slump. How do we get you out of your slump? That's not good. I think it's the summer pause. That's something. That's 62. I'm starting an illustration class. Oh, how fun. I love that. I was just talking. I actually um, got my, my nails done yesterday because they were a mess and needed cleaned up, and um, my friend Bev, who does my nails, was talking about she's doing a pottery class right now, and it just sounds like so much fun. She was talking about it. It's like, can I sign up? Can I do it with you? I would love to do pottery. That's one thing in college that I never got around to taking pottery class. I did so many things. Where I went to school, there were so many great things to learn about, and I loved all of them. Like, I did printmaking, and I... What else did I learn? Weaving and like I could just I think go to art school for the rest of my life. Um, your dog's portrait. Oh great Anita. That will be really fun. 
and you said creating art for a nonprofit fundraiser. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah. Yes, I, I do a lot of art for fundraisers. It is a nice way to be able to give back. You're doing something you enjoy doing and something you love, and you can, you know, give it to someone who appreciates it and raise money for causes. I love that. <clears throat> um, I'm going to put a little bit of black on my palette. I feel like I need a little black. All right, so I forget what I was talking about. Oh, I, Mary Eileen, I went to a school called Kutztown University. It's in Pennsylvania. It's only about an hour from where I live. And it was a great art school. I'm going to try to keep this very loose and fresh. It's crazy how you have to like keep that in mind the whole time or it, it goes kind of, um, it loses its spontaneity. That's exactly what happens is it loses its spontaneity. And I love the spontaneousness of like letting unexpected colors show through all that stuff. I say it all the time and, and I lose it all the time. Yeah, I'm going to work on, I have to go to a meeting this today after this about, um, I work on stuff for my town. We do um, an event in the fall. It's called East Petersburg Days, and I have to go to a meeting about doing the program for that. So that'll be fun. I love, I do a lot of, you know, pro bono stuff with my my uh, design business too. It's really are very, very dark. Very dark. <clears throat> I've got my rosemary brushes, but they seem so big. Good, Ellen. They should. Yay. <laughs> Bigger the better. Go big. That'll loosen you up. Yes, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, they are size wise, they're larger. Like when you um, order the, oh, what are those other brushes that I get? The Monarchs. They're proportionately like a Monarch 12 is much smaller than a Rosemary 13. But this is, this is my go to favorite brush, the 13 and also, I like their number eight when I'm doing tiny paintings or need to get in tighter. <clears throat> I was just too waiting for them to arrive. Yeah, Carol Ann, you're making me envious. I want, I want new rosemary brushes. I do have a lot, but I would love to order a full set of these um, clip short flats. I've never tried all of them. You know, we have to temper our art supply buying, right? That was one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> Thanks, Martha. Thank you. I love doing that. Okay. I think that's a good base. I've got everything kind of mapped out. I should look for some more dark areas, but I don't want to go too, too dark. I want to let lights, light show through in here. Maybe I should, I'm going to um, use my paper towel and pull off paint a little bit where my lighter areas are for no reason other than I feel like it, um, to kind of think of where my light lights are so I see how it all is going to come together a little bit. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah, I like that. I 
I was working on a painting um, for the show that I'm going to be in at um, the gallery here in Lancaster. And <clears throat> I just put down a really rough beginning wash. It was of a paintbrush and pretty big. And I loved it just as it was. Like I did go back in and work on it. But sometimes I love this like really fresh phase of it. And it is hard to hold on to the kind of magic of it. All right, I'm going to clean off my palette here. <clears throat> Whoops. And then I'll do my pigment sticks. So where's everyone? Um, where's everybody from? I say tuning in from that. It sounds stupid, doesn't it? Lots of darks in here. But I have kind of been using all the same um, pigment stick colors, but I did cut a new one out. Oh, well, I could do a little bit of it in here. It's kind of a mustardy color. What's this? What is this called? It's called um, Olive Yellow. It's pretty. Currently in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Beautiful day here. Lucky you, Bonnie. That is so fun. I will be there in at the end of the month in Rehoboth. Will you be there then? That's, we always go on vacation there. We had um, a place there with my husband's college roommate for several years. I love going there. It's my favorite beach. I've gone there since I was a young Young, young, like seventh grade every year. <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to do green. I'll do my tuning in from the hill country of Texas. Still in Wisconsin, but would love to go just about anywhere. Yes, it feels good to get out, go do things, and I feel like life feels normal. I think I was worried in the middle of COVID that it never would feel normal again, but... Like some of these colors will be interesting to mix because I don't, they almost look blue, even though they're really not blue. There's no blue in the, I'm going to put a little blue in there just because I can. Unseasonably cool in Ringgold, Georgia. Is it? Like how cool is it there? Oh, you won't be there then, Bonnie. Yes, yeah, so I would love to meet you another time. some spontaneous color in. Take some risks and have some fun. All right. Uh, what brand of pigment stick do you use and where do I get them? Melissa, these are um, called r &F pigment sticks and I just get them from Jerry's, Artorama, or Dick Blix. They're like creamy oil paint in a stick form. From Carlston, but in Nantucket now with my daughter. Oh, Mary Eileen, that sounds wonderful. How long will you be there? Are you there for the week? I've never been to Nantucket. I've been to Provincetown. Never to Nantucket. Sounds lovely. I think that looks plenty fun and I'll mix some colors so let me close my 55 degrees in Ontario very cool for this time of year that is cool have you ever used pigments just used no I have not tried only doing a painting with pigment sticks I don't know I should try it just to loosen myself up that just sounds so crazy loose to me because you can't you have no control over it kind of but I should why not right only why not is time, I think. <clears throat> I have so many things I want to do. Um, is this bothering you? Should I move this light? I, I'll just try and mix in this area. Um, oils, the pig, RNF pigment sticks are creamy. Um, the oil pastels are kind of waxy and 
hard. Um, so they're very different. And I think they say that the, the, um, oh my gosh, can you hear my husband up there? Um, the pigment sticks are creamy and they dry like oil paint kind of at the same rate, but oil pastels don't, um, I don't know if they ever dry. So you have to be careful of, um, how that works with your painting. some ultramarine blue in there. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, they're fun. You should get some and try them. They're really fun to work with. And I should try and do a whole painting of them. It just kind of loosens everything up, which is always a goal of mine. All right, and that's a nice dark, dark, dark. <clears throat> now this is just my my uh, magenta. Wait a minute. Add a little bit. I put my this is like permanent bright red from Vasari. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. Can you hear my husband talking? <clears throat> or because I have my headphones on, maybe you can't hear it. Yeah, this was this is magenta, and now I'm adding in. I'll grab it here. Um, here's my magenta. It's Block X magenta. That's my favorite kind of magenta. And that bright red, which I just had it out. Now, where on earth did I put that? You know I lose my paints all the time. <clears throat> well, it's a Vasari. It's called Vasari Permanent Bright Red. <clears throat> I know what it's called, but I don't. I lost it. <laughs> I just had it five minutes ago. That's crazy. <clears throat> and it's like just a perfect red without being a cadmium. I always hear that cadmiums aren't like healthy, so I try not to use them much. <coughs> oh, can't you, Ellen? All right, yeah, he's on the phone with his cousin. He's a little loud. <clears throat> I closed the door, but he came in here and opened it. All right. That's nice. Okay, that's a nice set of colors there. Black X and Vasari are so nice. Yes, Allie, I think so too. Using the right supplies makes a, a really big difference. I mean, as with anything, absolutely anything, good supplies make a difference. And it's hard to make a commitment to buy so much when you're not sure if you're even going to love oil painting. Um, but really... You don't need a lot. It's better to get a few colors and get good quality and see where that takes you instead of um, uh, you know, buying a whole set of inexpensive paints. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I need like the co some of the colors in here are colors I can't quite even say what colors they are. They're like kind of dark. I need more of neutral. Maybe if I put a little bit of this blue in there. <clears throat> yeah, that's nice. It's a nice kind of neutral. What do you mix your paints on? Uh, yes, this is a, Melissa, it's, um, it's just a sample from like the counter, countertop store from, uh, yeah, I just went in and asked to buy like a sample if they had any leftover samples. I think you you can get, I have one too that is a um, marble that's like a cutting board that I got on Amazon and that works well too. But that one had like a dark line through the middle of it. I'll probably use it sometimes. Um, yeah, that's, this is a nice, like a kind of a weird color that, I love colors that you can't name that you would say, well, I don't know that color is sort of purple but it's sort of magenta it's sort of red I love colors like that do you clean off your palette every day or just keep adding to it Michael I clean off the middle unless there's some piles of gorgeous color that I'm going to try to use in a painting the next day and like my colors up here you can see that that like 
The darker ones dry faster, so I'll clean them off probably almost every other day. But the light ones in the middle, like, like this um, Indian yellow, lasts forever and doesn't go dry. So that's why there's a bigger area around that. That's I probably just refreshed the piles and had used them. So a little bit of both. But the middle area, like where the paint's thinner, it does dry out more. <clears throat> so those colors I do, I pull, clean that off. And I don't know that you need to, but I'm just kind of inherently a messy person, so I'm better off um, cleaning it off and starting fresh because I'd probably end up with a huge mess. A huge mess, yes. Yes, I'm constantly trying not to be a messy person, but it's not working for me. <clears throat> All right, I need some of my turquoise and then a shadow color. I'm going to play with this. This is a new color that I got. It's really fun. It's um, cobalt turquoise light. So I'll use that for some of my... So I need dark and light of the color for the carton. A good light color, maybe even make it a little bit lighter. <clears throat> and it's good to pre-mix your colors. It's hard to force yourself to do that because I always want to dive right into the painting and not go through this process, but it keeps it more cohesive if you keep um, all your colors at the beginning. Oh, I'm in the light there. I always thought it would be fun to be a color name. Oh, that would be fun, Martha. Like rose. You would make a nice rose. Right. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put some brown in there. That's pretty good. All right. Now I need a shadow area. Man, I get messy. I don't want to be messy, but constantly trying to have that not be part of my who I am but very hard thing to change hmm. okay I think that's good I think that's a good start now I'm sorry there is a shadow there let me show you better so there are my reds and then those are kind of more of neutralized desaturated and that's nice shadow color, I think. And then some fun colors for the carton. So that's a good start. Every now and then I might take a piece and add something to it. But for the most part, that's a good palette to begin with. All right. Whoops. Let me get this situated. I already love, like, some of those vibrant purples in there. Are really magical. I do love color. Like, when I see colors like that, it just is just... I don't know what it is. I love it. And color isn't necessarily only just the thing of the color, but it's the colors that they're dancing next to that make them special. Can you say the colors on my palette? <clears throat> Joy, the ones that I used here were, because I used, you know, all different. But I, for the most part, in this pile, I used magenta, and I used um, that bright permanent red, the Vasari color. Oh, I want the, to name colors as a job. Oh, Martha, yes, I would love that. Like nail polish to name the nail polish colors would be really fun. So really, I didn't use that many colors. I did use some purple and I used a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, some blue, and a couple of these colors. I didn't use any green, I don't think, which neutralizes red. It's not a bad idea to have it on your palette. And I've been playing around more with that orange, but I didn't use any of that today either. So really... It's a pretty limited palette. Yes, it would be fun to name those. Yeah, I always love nail polish names that, um, what's the brand name that always has the cute names? I guess they all do it now. All right, I feel like you're leaning a little. There we go, I think that's good. <clears throat> Getting out my big brush, I'm gonna block in some of this. Um, 
Now that color looked like a more of a distinct color on my palette that I mixed up for the shadow area, but on here it looks very gray. But that's good, good, because brighter colors dance against the gray really nicely. OPI, that's right, that's the one that has the cute names. Yes, Elton. I got water, it's called watermelon on my toes yesterday. It looks a little red to me. I was it's a little um, brighter red than I would than I would have named a watermelon color. I don't dislike the color, I just feel like it looks more red than watermelon. <clears throat> Are you still adding medium? Oh, here, let me see. Are you still adding medium at this point or just straight paint? Now it's just straight paint, <clears throat> Michael. So underneath here, oh, you had asked me about the paper feeling dry. <coughs> the Arches Oil Paper, I put probably two or three coats of gesso on here before I started. So like, um, where's one? You can just kind of, here's piece of this paper. I don't know if you can see, you can see the line where it is. So I kind of mark off my paper with pencil where my area is. And then I gesso just inside here so that I know where to tape off to make this be like a six by nine painting. <coughs> and then on my base layer, I use my Zest It, which is this product. Or you can mix 50% um, <coughs> Um, like turpentine or turpenoid or something like that and 50% linseed oil. And I just put it in this little jar and dip in very lightly for the first layer when I was doing all the transparents. And then I do my pigment sticks and now I'm just using paint with no, no medium in it at all. <clears throat> I have trouble naming my paintings. I let my husband do that. Oh, that's Great, Carol Ann. Yeah, I have trouble with it too, and I'm always doing it like on the fly. The thing I have the most trouble with is keeping my paintings organized. Like, like, oh my gosh, I can't hardly even. Is this live at 7.30 on Wednesdays? I've watched replays on YouTube. It's at 8 o'clock um, Eastern time. So yeah, it's 8 o'clock because 7.30 is just a little early for me. <clears throat> I like to put in a lot of my darker colors first. Oh, I know. I was feeling like just a little bit like this. <clears throat> Take a little bit of, I wanted this to have, a, well, that's a little red, more red than I wanted it to be. Like, I feel like there's a glow of kind of purplish, reddish coming from that bottom corner. I don't do purple. <clears throat> I have a hard time layering paints. I'm trying to learn. Oh, you are welcome. Um, and part two, like for me, and I understand that kind of like figuring it all out because I'm like that with, I've been trying to learn more about acrylic painting. And I find that very challenging because it dries so quickly. So I'm used to like the richness of doing oil paints and having like a rich wet area to work into and with with acrylic paints like then I go for a color and it's already dry <clears throat> so it is they're all kind of different beasts to to figure out each different kind of painting but it is fun to learn all of them because you learn from knowing about all of them some yellow remember you oh I used to start at seven yes because I would go to my office yep I would start at seven um because I needed to be ready and to work by 8 30 and now I'm still we started working from home with COVID and we all like it so I think we're just going to stick with that <clears throat> um so that's why I can do it later because it, my commute is literally a minute into my office. Oh, 
good is that? Yeah, some good things have come from COVID, for sure. Oh, yes, yes, my Art in Bloom class. That's going to open up again. I'm thinking, I'm figuring all that out now. It makes me tired thinking about, like, I have to launch, like, let people know about the course, and it's so much marketing, and it, it takes so much time and effort. So if you're on my mailing list, I wanted to say that I just made myself a note, and I hope I don't forget, but if you're on my mailing list and you don't want to get my emails about, like, if I'm marketing my course or whatever, just send me a note, and I'll take you off the list or you know, just from those emails because I know it's kind of overwhelming. It's overwhelming to me too. I don't like doing it at all. But um, that's the only way to really let people know about it. <clears throat> and, you know, I'd like to make enough money to be able to make another course. Did you give up your beautiful office? <laughs> yes. Not yet. We still have it, but I'm seriously thinking about giving it up. Yeah. Yeah, I had a couple workshops there, and that was really fun. Maybe I should try and squeeze one in while I still have the office. Because the place where I did it in New Hope, my friend Glenn sold sold his little farmette just last week, so I don't have that either anymore. I think he's going maybe back to Laguna Beach. Maybe I'll have to do one there. Wouldn't that be fun? Because <clears throat> that he's my friend that filmed my Art and Bloom course for me. Um, so I don't have that resource right now until I figure out where he lands and what else is happening, but hopefully that'll all happen again. One more course would be fun. <clears throat> about, oh, yes, about the deliberate strokes. Yes, am I, am I not doing that? Yeah. Deliberate strokes, like think about where you're putting your brush strokes and don't fuss with it. What's that called? It's called something when you go into your brush strokes and just fuss with them. Yes, he sold that beautiful farm. Yes. He always gets an itch to move on to the next thing. He, he loves change like most people hate change. All of a sudden he had this idea that he was ready. And he doesn't even know where he's going to move. But yeah, it's sold. It was too, it's a lot, it was a lot of work for him. A lot, a lot of work. He needed someone there to help him do all that. I mean, we went and helped him, but it was so beautiful. <clears throat> I am a little sad about it, obviously. Come back to the farm behind my house on Sullivan Road. Oh, I could ask Jackie about that. She might let me do that. I The last time I talked to her, her niece was living in there. And they also had the barn on, I think they still have it on. What is that? I get my pikes confused. Marietta Ave. <clears throat> New Hope is such a fun place. I haven't, it's been years since I've been there. Oh my gosh, Michael, it is so magical. <clears throat> there is truly <laughs> something about that place that's magic <clears throat> like even when I would be, take photos there the photos have a warmer light and I remember like if I find photos and I know that I've taken them at, at in New Hope they just look different um it's magical don't know why Yes, and my friend, it's actually my husband's college roommate had a house there for, I guess it's been like f a few years, five years? I would say he usually gets an itch to move in about five years. I love you the way you work. Love your strokes. Love your style from Bahrain. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it is awfully fun. Now, this one's challenging because it's very dark. I usually am used to using kind of more bright pinks and... Kind of a different color palette, but I do like how kind of dramatic this is. It's a good word for it. Drama. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do a little bit of my carton. Go for 
further back here. Very soft, gentle brush strokes. And try to put down your brush strokes and then don't fuss with them. Just put them down and let them be. It's super hard. Oh yes, I was saying my Art and Bloom course is gonna launch again in the fall. And then I will open up the Inspiring Art Collective too. So if any of you guys are in that, which you probably, some of you are, I'm not, I'm going to be off for two weeks and then I'm hoping to come back with a plan. So I kind of have a syllabus for what's happening. I'm excited about it. I'm excited for that part of time, like to kind of get moving again. I need a pause first. Oh, Brandon number of my brush. My brush is a Rosemary Company short eclipse flat and it's a size 12. How are you framing your paintings <clears throat> in irregular shapes? <clears throat> well, I'm trying not to make any of them really be irregular shapes, but um, that's something else that I need to work on. Maybe I can think about that a little bit today, but I wanted to add, I have like a framing guide and in my framing guide, I wanna add ways of framing these works on paper because I am selling a lot of them. So one of my methods is to frame um, it, mount it onto another piece of paper and then frame it with a frame. Um, I'm not explaining that very well, but not with glass. And then I wanted to have my friend Jenny make one up for me to show where it would be under glass with a mat and then also to do, um, I could, um, I've been playing around, oh, I'll show you. I'll show you what I've been doing. It's been really, float, yes, float the painting. Then another thing that I've been doing, I'll show you one. <clears throat> I was just working on this this morning. <clears throat> so this is one that I did, and it's on Arches Oil Paper, <clears throat> and I mounted it to of a raised panel like I like to paint on only it didn't have gesso on it it's just a plain wood raised panel and then I'm coating it with cold wax and buffing it so that it has a little bit of a sheen to it but it's not glossy like um like um <clears throat> like varnish and it's not matte it just kind of has a really nice luster like a richness to it and I think I'm going to keep the sides natural Oh, Carol Ann, yes, I usually either put varnish on them or like I'm, I've been learning about, um, I'm loving it. I've been learning about, uh, what did I just say? Um, cold wax. It's like a, my new kind of obsession right now is playing with that. So I got a book on it and... I'd like to use it within making the painting and then also work on playing with it um, to, to put as coats over top when the painting is finished. Um, what time is it? 8.44. I, usually I pay more attention to the time, guys. I'm not even... When I get really lost in a painting, sometimes I forget what time it is. Do you feel like that? How do you buff cold wax? So I put a, the coat of cold wax on it and then let it dry overnight. And then I buff it with like a paper towel. I got some of those blue towels like from, I was at Home Depot with my son the other day and I wanted the, and I bought the blue paper towels just to see what they're like and I love them. It's really fun. My daughter actually purchases hers through a company in UK. And it smells like citrus. Oh, oh, the varnish does. Cold wax is so, yes, it is so much fun. Can you put the wax on acrylic paintings? I would think so. I would think you could put cold wax on anything because it's kind of its own thing. Like I think, I think so, but I'm not sure. Yes, but I'm I'm gonna say yes. I think you can. So yeah, that's kind of my new obsession that I'm learning. I love learning new things. So there's always something new going on. <clears throat> A 
Why do you use oil on paper versus stretched canvas? Um, I, it's just something I've been experimenting with. I also paint on stretch, stretched canvas and I also paint on um, cardboard or even wood with gesso on it. Don't hang near a warm window. Oh, it, um, I put coat on watercolor batiks works great. Yes, I heard that once once it sets up, once the um, cold wax sets up, you can chip it in warm weather. Like they say that there's no issue with it. It seems hard to believe. I worry about when my painting ship, like I had a few that I shipped out last week and it was such a warm week and it stresses me, but they all have gotten there safely so far. Now I need some highlights and some of those little wispy strings. So I'll get a small brush out. And oh, I'm rolling around on my palette. Um color. That color is so oh, now I'm gonna try. is a really odd color like it's hard to know but it doesn't matter you can just play with it and see what you get putting some little highlights in there Like I have some bright, there's some purple showing through in here that, you know, literally aren't in there, but I love them. I don't want to cover that up. I have little bits of like my gold. Actually, I can put a little spot of gold over here. Do I need to get some rosemary brushes for those perfect brush strokes? Yes, I think, I think you do. I have cold wax painting hanging for years in front of my studio wall. It hasn't melted yet in this hot summer weather. It's been there for years. Oh, that's good to hear. I like to hear someone who has one like that because, yeah, I can't hang mine. I can't hang mine for years and know what's going to happen because there's not enough time to do that. Yes, that's good to hear. Yes, I have heard that it, they really do well. And sometimes I'm challenged a little bit with, with varnishing paintings. Like I don't, something about them, I don't like how they look. So I like having another option like that. Um, I need a little bit more highlights. What is it, 49? KW Framing Art. Cold wax on canvas, yep. Cold wax, it's my new fun thing. Sometimes when I'm doing something like this and it's hard to think about the colors um, and how to make them work, like if I had the time I would zoom in on just one area of this painting of this and try to like, like, look, there's a, if you zoom in there, it would be fun just to do one little piece of it because in here, there's actually a reflection of the carton and look, that looked cool adding that right in there. Like, unless you zoom in like that, you would never even see that little subtlety. And that's kind of where the magic happens, you know, if you if you find something like that and add it in. And here's another little. Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. That's fun. It is just so fun. It's so fun to see it evolve when, you know, it didn't even exist before. And we're all so lucky to get to create something like that, like that never existed. It's just dark. It just kind of goes in here. Then I better work on my highlights or my uh, stems. I'm stepping back here. Um, can you? Sure, Martha, you could do anything. Um, I did, I added a little bit of pigment stick of gold in there. Did you use video blue for the white part of the table? Yes, I did. I used video blue. I'm just learning acrylics and watching you. I want to dry oils. Yeah, money. Well, like I said, I said earlier, if you do want to try oils, like it's good to, better to get good quality and, and um, oil paint and just have fewer colors. You really don't need all the colors to do a painting. In my Inspiring Art Collective, we were working on painting with, um, let, me, let me do some, I don't know, what do you guys think? I think I see something that needs softened right here. Oops, my paintbrush is swirling around. I hate when that happens. I get it, I get it, it falls into my paint and then I get it all over my hands. I love thinking that, that it started out as a blank white space and now yes and it never existed there yeah, that helped okay so i need this is that cool green you know what i think i need a smaller brush i think i have a little here's one i need just a little brush and this neutral kind of weird color that that is let's see what do we have whoops <laughs> wrong thing I'm letting that come out a little bit past because sometimes it's good to have something break the line even though and here's another one that's doing it On cherries now, yes, me too. I think I need to go to the local farmer's market today and get some. Oops, that got a little fat. A little fatter than I wanted. Let's see if I can unfatten that a little bit. Oops, I have yellow on my brush. That's not good. green in there. A little one in here too. <clears throat> yeah, makes me want cherries. Okay. Does it need anything else? I'm going to sign it. We have 55, five minutes left. I see a little bit of white peeking here. Okay, 
I like it. All right, should I pull the tape off? I lost video. Can you use the pigment sticks at the final finish? Yes, you can. I mean, I, I don't usually. I did a little bit just because I wanted a little bit of that gold on there. But here, I'll do the tape reveal. I love doing this part of it. And I feel like it's finished. If I go back in there and do any more, it's, I'm going to start fussing with it. And then I mess it up. When I do this tape part, I always get it all over my hands. It's hard to keep it tidy. And I love that it has that little bit of a rough edge. I don't even mind when, you know, the little bit of paint bleeds underneath. But there it is. How fun is that? I love the bright colors in here. <clears throat> Oops. See, there's some brights showing. I think I need to work on cleaning my camera. Okay, and there's my palette. So I really didn't mix anything other than what we were using. And we're almost out of time. So thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. I'll do this again next week as usual should go in the calendar. Yes, that's a great idea. So delicious. Wonderful. Well, thanks for coming, guys. Um, and I will save this. It'll be on my YouTube channel and it'll be, um, you can get to it through the blog on my website. And if you're not on my newsletter list, just sign up through the link in my bio here on Instagram. I'm always trying to grow that. So thanks for coming, guys. It was great hanging out with you. I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye.